Marcel Fortuna. That, right. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> did I say that? Fortuna? Yep. Is it Fortuna? That's it. Nice. Nice. I know uh, you're like, man, what are we going to talk about, man? I don't, <laughs> I don't talk a lot. Right. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm excited to do, like to have this conversation mm-hmm. with you because um, how long have you been coming into like St. Charles MMA? Because I know like you, you kind of came in and out for a little bit. Right. When did you first... It's yeah, so the first time was uh, 2015 okay. when I first moved here, and I stayed around here for about six months. Yeah. And I, I trained for a little bit at St. Charles MMA, and then I, after that I moved back to Brazil. So okay. Um, my ex-wife's fr- uh, family is still living here, so I, I came back a couple times to visit. So yeah. came back, visit the gym a couple times. Um and then uh, now I moved back here last year, August last year. So I've been going to the gym for a little while now. Yeah. Um, I was there for six months from last year, and then COVID happened. Right. I I traveled to Brazil right the day of the emergency state. So I was like, what? I had the, everything scheduled, everything ready. I left the country the same day that all that happened. Oh wow. So I was going to Brazil for like four weeks. And end up staying there three months. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> dude. man, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. Got to wait a little bit, see. Yeah, dude, that was just such on. a crazy time. Yeah. So and Everything just stopped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're in Brazil for three months, just mm-hmm. unexpectedly, right? Yep. You're, you're going mm-hmm. for a month. Were you going just to go home and visit? Yeah, I just, just go see family and stuff. Yeah. So everything was shut down there, too. So just at home, not doing anything. and Yeah. Until some friends got tired of staying at home and started the <laughs> secret training, you know. So yeah. you had to, like, be invited to go to the gym, close doors and stuff right. like that. So just a few guys. Yeah. Um, so uh, after a few weeks, everyone tired of staying home, sitting at home, started this little thing there. Yeah. So that was good that, I mean, at first everyone was scared, so we waited, waited a little bit. And then right. afterwards we started getting together. Just a few guys, and that was good because then the whole time I stayed there, I got to be training. Right, you're staying active. Right. Yeah, man. I don't think I don't think I probably sat around longer than maybe a few weeks too. Yeah. Because there was a group of us again, like there's probably three or four of us. We were going to someone's house, uh-huh. and he had like a nice setup in his basement, mm-hmm. and we were just training there right. until they actually opened the gyms. Mm-hmm. But I think so. When did or did the gyms open? back did they open back up in brazil before you left or um, was it kind of, no it was, it was underground the yeah whole time? it was still yeah underground the whole time oh. now they are open but they still have like all those rules you gotta wear a mask you gotta train like oh. six feet apart it's like a lot that? of rules yeah how can you train jiu <laughs> like that right <laughs> so yeah this is crazy man at the very beginning like when i wasn't training i was just like I was very close to the beach, so just, like, go run or something at the beach, and not even that you could do. So I was like, I would wait for the evening, everything dark. (laughs) (laughs) I go do my little run. Yeah, bro. Breaking the wall, bro. (laughs) Rebels. I mean, Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. It's just so crazy. Like, I just, I went really Mm stir-crazy for those few weeks, like, not doing Mm -hmm. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Like, it affects Mm -hmm. affects my whole life. Yeah, (laughs) man. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu, man, it's, it's good for you. It's your treatment. Yeah. You gotta be in there every yeah every week. Well, just exercising mm-hmm. and just like yeah. sweating. I just feel better when I get a sweat in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, what part of Brazil are you from? Uh, that's uh, south. So it's um, I'd say it's like two states away from like São Paulo, Rio. Okay. Yeah. What's it called? What's uh, it? Santa Catarina. Santa Catarina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that where you grew up and? Yeah, that's that's where I, where I grew up. Dang, mm-hmm. how long have you been training jiu-jitsu? So, like, when did you actually start jiu-jitsu? So, I started there in my hometown, and was I was 16 years old. So, I start my hometown. That's, like, I trained my hometown for, like, a couple years, and then I moved to, like, the capital, the main city in the state, to start training with the uh, Gracies, because my, my first instructor, he trained under Crawling Gracies, so he moved back to our hometown, start coaching there, so I start training with him, and then a couple years later... I moved to the uh, capital to train with straight with uh, at his his gym, crawling crawling Grace gym. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, how many Gracie gyms are there? Do you know, like in Brazil, is there like a main Gracie academy there? Or I know, like, cause like, like the brothers they mm-hmm, split out. Right. There's so many in the family now. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, Gracie gyms, you know. So, yeah. in, but my state, the crawling Gracie and Rillian Gracie were, were the guys who brought the 
jiu-jitsu to my state in the early 90s so oh, okay so that's like the original academy within right your state. yeah so if you go around the state there's probably like a lot of gyms like crawling gracie gym or really in grace gym yeah. yeah dang so you started when you're 16 you're 34 mm -hmm. now yeah so what was that almost 20 18 years ago yep <laughs> it's dang, been a while bro yeah i was trying to do the math the mm. other day because like i was i was looking um like up I was looking up like your jujitsu background and mm -hmm. stuff because like, dude, you've been a black belt longer than I've been training jujitsu. <laughs> like I think, yeah. did, did, did you get your black belt in 2007 or yeah, 2007? 2007. The first uh, worlds here in the U S yeah. yeah. So I came, I came compete in the first worlds in LA and then I, I won my division and then got, got the belt at the podium. podium. Dang yeah. dude, that must've been a great feeling. Yeah. It was, it was awesome, man. Yeah. That was, that was a great year for like brown belt. So I'm I might have gotten my black belt the year before, but I was like, no, I still I kind of felt my instructor was gonna promote me, so I just let him know, man, I, I didn't do good this year. I still gotta yeah. compete more. I gotta do some more tournaments. So I did the the whole year that I waited to get my belt. It was awesome. I mean, I I won pretty much every tournament. Yeah, because it's like it's like you were essentially ready for that that next level, but mm -hmm. you wanted to do some more things on the competition right. scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that because I feel like right now where I'm at in my journey, I feel like I'm I'm pretty close mm -hmm. to maybe getting that next belt. Mm -hmm. But it's like I was talking to Mike. Like I wanted. There's some things I really want to do on mm -hmm. this like on this competition scene this next year. Right. Like you just you just know it. You can feel uh -huh. like you have something to like to really do. Right. So you had a solid year, dude. So what was so when you first started training? Was it just like were you doing it like full time all the time? Like um, yeah, I'm pretty much um well, once once at least once a day every yeah. day and then like every now and then when I was gonna go to competitions i do another session like judo and yeah. stuff to complement you know so okay um j train judo two three times a week jujitsu every day yeah. yeah so and that's this is all like so you're going to school you're training judo mm -hmm. you're training jujitsu yeah you're, you're just like living in the gym dude you're an animal <laughs> like cause yeah, yeah back then that was, that was it it was just school training and home yeah. nice dude well because I'm, I'm sitting here like doing the math like you got mm -hmm. your black belt in like four or five years yeah yeah, like that's like yeah. I used, I used to compete all the time. Like that's and not think, easy. Yeah, that's that's what helped me with my fast uh, promotion was that every month, every other month, I was competing. Yeah. yeah. So, do you, like, what's your approach to training? Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, how do you like to approach training? As far as like, what's your philosophy, or do you like have a, a style in which you like to train? Um, I have. I mean, the way I I I train. Uh, I used to, uh, I started training was most like you get in there and grind, you know, just roll and roll and roll and yeah. start figuring things out. So a lot of life. Yeah, a, lo a lot of life. So that's how I start. As I start progressing, I, then I'll start, uh, you know, developing more of the skills and stuff, working all that stuff. So um not but nowadays i you know things have changed a lot i started in the early 2000s you know so nowadays i have like a different approach like because i i coach you know and teach so yeah i have a different approach to to it to it you know so i like um i like the drills and all that stuff you know so start with the fundamentals basic techniques all yeah. that stuff so so you really evolved in the way in which you like approach training now yes yes because you know i moved to the u.s like a year or two after I got my black belt and then I start training under half grace in California. So I moved here to start training for MMA and at the same time, you know, I had to teach, I had to make some money. So yeah. I started working with half training with him and he like did all this, you know, training with me for like teaching and coaching. So it was great. That's like one of the things that helped me develop a lot, you know, skill wise and teaching. Coaching wise. helped you develop? Or uh, both uh, coaching and he training me, oh, you okay. know, so yeah, yeah. When, yeah, when I start teaching and coaching, man, it helped me a lot too. And yeah, and then plus having him, you know, 
do the training with me, how he likes things done, how... Yeah, so his style you know. of coaching really, like, helped elevate your game? Yes, yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you you moved here to specifically start training for MMA? Is yeah. that what brought you here? Yeah, that's why I moved to the okay, U.S. Okay, okay. So what was the transition for you? Because, I mean, like, you're in Brazil, mm -hmm. right? You had this phenomenal year, mm -hmm. right, with you're just winning every tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, as a brown belt, you won worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, you kill that, you get your black belt, and then you're like, it's time to start fighting. Is mm -hmm. that is that? What yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I still did like one more year competing in jiu and as a black belt. Yeah. Uh, while I was still in Brazil, and then when it was about time, like my friend who, my friend who he who first brought here for the worlds, I came with a friend who had traveled the U.S. before, you know, so he he knew people here. So he was he was abroad at the time when after I got my bl black belt and I competed at the world. So he came back and then he was like, oh, I'm going back to the U.S. So I was like, oh, yeah, man, I want to go back. I want to I want to go this time and stay and start training uh, for MMA. Yeah. So he brought me back. He he is the, the guy who, like, introduced me to uh, Half Gracie. So. Got it. So you had you had visited here to compete at Worlds. Yeah. And then you're mm -hmm. like, oh, let me go back and, and train. Right. Because you had already been introduced to health. Right. Oh, okay. So, so I just um, came back, and that's what I want to do now. I want to, you know, tr train um, jiu-jitsu, uh, health gym, no gi, and learn, like, jiu-jitsu for MMA. And then uh, I start training Muay Thai, wrestling here and there. So, uh I had a, like a good opportunity at the beginning because like the gym I started teaching jiu-jitsu. Um, it's called World Muay Thai Team USA in San Francisco. Okay. So I used to run a jiu-jitsu program there. So in the morning I, I would go teach my jiu-jitsu class and right after train Muay Thai. So it was oh, like, nice. yeah, it was a good, good, it was a good thing going on there for a while. So I would teach and train, teach and train, and then yeah. do my all my striking training with the coach there yeah that's legit so you had mm -hmm. access to like some really world-class like coaching mm -hmm. and it worked really well with your schedule yeah so up up until that time were you just only doing grappling so like judo yeah jiu pretty, yeah, no striking? pretty much and mostly gi i, I barely oh. did any no gi or la until oh, wow. after my black belt yeah dang, so you just jumped head first right into mma right yeah, uh dang did you have any did you have an amateur career as an mma uh, guy no. or you went straight pro, straight pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when i when i moved here and i got to california they 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 wanted to start oh you gotta do amateur and all that stuff you know so like, no. i kind of oh, man <laughs> <laughs> I, i'd rather just go probably just kind of skip that yeah step. yeah mm -hmm. well there's there's something to that right i mean i can kind of mm -hmm. understand both arguments of where mm -hmm. it's like you can do the amateur scene mm -hmm. it's low pressure right you know if you lose mm -hmm. no big deal it's kind of all learning you kind of work mm -hmm. out the kinks but then there's also like there's something about like competing at the highest level mm -hmm. that will just like elevate your game that right. much faster mm -hmm. right it's like right. you almost you almost perform at the level you're competing mm -hmm. against so if you right. if you compete against other people that mm -hmm. are just really really good uh -huh. you're going to get really really good a whole lot quicker right right so i can definitely understand mm -hmm. that philosophy yeah so yeah that that's yeah that's what happened i i thought like oh man I'll, i'm always competing in like high level jiu jitsu i trained with these guys at half who were like at the time they were like good guys fighting at strike force and stuff back then so it was like man i i i can just go pro i want to like you can do yeah, this yeah because your jiu-jitsu is yeah. good enough mm -hmm. right you probably have good enough takedowns right. to where you can control and then mm -hmm. like i always say it's a lot easier to teach a, like a wrestler mm -hmm. how to strike than a striker how to wrestle right yeah because yeah like man you know jiu-jitsu is like for me is i started jiu-jitsu because i thought man jiu -jitsu is like the best martial arts ever so i was like pretty confident that i can start this pro man and just go in there and yeah and i have jiu-jitsu i'm safe yeah worst know? case scenario but, take them down choke right them out. <laughs> and that's how it went like my first couple fights just straight to the ground yeah did jiu-jitsu and then with time i started loosening up and yeah using more of my striking okay Cause, and you're a grinder dude like mm -hmm. you're just like you're really like you, you stay really um tight with your form Mm -hmm. but like you're you're not afraid to like eat some shots to get in there and get right. <laughs> like part of the game <laughs> take, take you got like a strong chin bro mm -hmm. like you'll take some punches dang Thanks. man dude that's 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 a hell of a transition man but there is there is no like real better base in like wrestling or jujitsu because mm -hmm. right. once you get to the ground it's mm -hmm. just like all right i can relax mm -hmm. now and i can finish this right. here if i absolutely mm -hmm. need to 
Um, yeah, so that that was one of the things too, wrestling. You know, like yeah. another thing I I learned when I moved here. So also in California, I used to live by um, a high school, and then this wrestling coach knew how. And then the gym I was teaching at, he came once with a couple kids to use the mat, and I was like, hey, Half introduced me to him, and he's like, oh, I coach at this gym and, and stuff. And I was like, hey, I'd like you to start training some wrestling, and then he's like, oh, just come to the school. So yeah. That's how I started. Just went to the, this high school, start training with some kids, you know, yeah. nice and easy. Let them play around with me, just so I I get the I get the style, you know, work the takedowns, get move flow with them, so we can you know improve and learn. So yeah, it was a great great time l learning for from them too. Yeah, yeah. Did you did did having a base in jujitsu? Did you feel that kind of maybe affect the way you approach wrestling at all? Because, like, I know with me, mm -hmm. like, I started as a wrestler. So, like, mm -hmm. whenever I started doing more jujitsu, and even now, like, jujitsu will take, like, the fear out from being on your back, right? right? Which is mm -hmm. the complete opposite goal of wrestling, right? right? You don't mm -hmm. ever want to be on your back. So, it's like, whenever you have jujitsu, it's like, all right, just take me now. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll go to my back. Right. Early. So mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes it's hard to, like, kind of flip that switch where mm -hmm. it's like, all right, I can't go to my back. Mm -hmm. I can have to get this takedown. Mm -hmm. Was that, like, a difficult transition for you um, at all? Not really, because, you know, like, like I said, for competition, in jiu-jitsu i used to do some judo because okay. I, I was more of like a top guy you're more of a top player. so okay. it was uh, like yeah being on my back would be like a less resort but okay. i'd rather you know get that takedown so i was kind of used to that game but wrestling was like a totally different style you know like yeah for the way you know doing the double legs and all the, those attacks with judo I was more used like doing drags and hip throws stuff mm -hmm. like that but um so wrestling it helped me with like the double legs single legs body locks all that stuff yeah mm -hmm. kind of more like takedowns with the hips right like wrapping mm -hmm. around it. okay yeah. did you compete in, ju in judo as well or did uh, you mostly just compete in jujitsu yeah just jujitsu uh, okay yeah. <clears throat> so let me fix your cord there for you buddy Thank um you. yeah man that's dude that's just just jumping head first like so you moved all the way to the states mm -hmm. to start competing and that's right. that was what like 12 years ago you said uh 2009 2009 yeah. so 11 years yeah. ago you started fighting mm -hmm. yeah. yeah man you've had you've had like some success for sure man mm -hmm. like you made it to the biggest mm -hmm. stage right. um i was looking at your record as far as like all the fights that you've had like dude you've had a shit ton of fights bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah i wish i, I had had more fights you know because like when i moved in 2009 yeah i only got to do my first fight in 2011 two years later <laughs> yeah yeah but, uh, it was good because i had the time you know because i had no striking at all so i had like time, time to, to really build. yeah be yeah. prepare for that so the, on that side was good you had that time but it took me two years and it was like every i mean i would only get like a couple fights a year maybe three at the most so yeah a little hard. But you're staying active mm -hmm. as, as as best as you could dude. Mm -hmm. like you've had a lot of fights right yeah so it's, yeah most yeah mostly so when i got associated with this show in, uh, in the bay area dragon house yeah that that's where i did most of my fights so it was good that we, i had a partnership going with him and and the guy would like help me fighting uh, finding opponents and yeah. stuff so that's when it really it's started moving for me you know got get it to fight every uh, every few months yeah mm -hmm. cuz it's such a grind people don't understand like it's a real grind mm -hmm. to like get to that next stage mm -hmm. of like fights yep. i mm -hmm. mean did you have a period where it was it was just like just difficult finding opponents people dropping out or mm -hmm. you know you get somebody's you know scheduled and then uh, yeah yeah the very big yeah the very beginning man my actually my first my very first fight uh the guy didn't show up the next day. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so but he weighed in and then yeah, he the weighed in. We did the face off and stuff, and yeah. the next day, where is he? <laughs> Dude, that's so crazy. I've had that happen before. Mm -hmm. Dude was talking trash and everything, mm -hmm. and didn't show up. Yeah. I wonder what would possess somebody to not do that. I, there's yeah. no way I could ever just like not show yeah, up. That's, yeah, not professional at all. And then they, yeah, they, I think they came up with some excuse, <laughs> but I, I can't really remember right now. And then um, I think my second or third fight, yeah. so, um, the guy wanted to fight, but he couldn't fight. I think his medical didn't come through or something oh, really? like that. It was late, yeah. stuff like that. So that happened. At the very beginning, that's when it happened to me that, you know, 
the guy didn't show up and had some problems yeah. but later on i i think all the, everyone else was solid everyone was there you know yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's just there's like this period where there's just like a lot mm-hmm. of like ups and downs and uncertainty mm-hmm. right. of like i tell people all the time like you train with julius all the time right, right. like mm-hmm. i feel like he's a great example of just like staying disciplined Mm -hmm. during during that time of uncertainty because Mm -hmm. there was a period where like he couldn't get fights Mm -hmm. or they would fall through Mm -hmm. or or like whatever the case would be Mm -hmm. and it's like a lot of guys will fall apart during that time they'll quit training Mm -hmm. they'll get heavy Mm -hmm. they'll get out of shape whatever the case is like dude you got to stay ready Mm -hmm. because you don't know when that opportunity is going to come so it's like it sounds like you did a good job probably like staying disciplined mm-hmm. during that yeah, time. Yeah, I mean same thing. Yeah. Always always training, always busy. If, if even if it's not MMA, I'm doing my jujitsu, always yeah. always training, you know. Yeah, I remember like when I first moved here in two thousand fifteen I met Julius and he's you know, I going back and forth and he's this whole time, yeah, you know, just training, always grinding and just you know, progressing. A yeah, lot. getting better, staying <laughs> yeah. ready, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Did you get like a short notice fight for for like when you first got Sign with the UFC was like a short notice, yeah. like two weeks. Yeah, that was that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was a short notice, man. It was like I had just that's when I had just moved back to Brazil and I was there for a for a few couple months and then I got a new manager there and he like in a couple of weeks he called me back, Hey, there's this opportunity here at the UFC, you want it? Oh man. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah, for sure, let's do it. I mean but there was like this little details you know it's two weeks the guys in the division above you know? yeah so you had to go up and wait uh, yeah oh shit dang i was gonna yeah. say how much you had to cut but you had yeah. to go up yeah my weight didn't go up at all <laughs> oh wow so i just went up on the division and yeah so i, was, I usually fight uh light heavyweight so i had to fight the heavy you wanted weight the division. heavyweight yeah <laughs> Dude, that is a significant mm. jump, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems so weird that we don't have more weight classes in mm-hmm. fighting mm-hmm. because 205 up mm-hmm. to heavyweight, which is 265 women, right. that's a massive yeah, gap. That's huge, yeah. How big was the dude? Do you know? Do you remember? He, yeah, he was, I think he had, was like 45 pounds over. Holy and shit. 6'4". Like <laughs> <laughs> but I guess when the opportunity comes, dude, you yep. take it, right? Mm-hmm. Dang, it's always almost a two-week notice fight, Mm -hmm. like whether it's Bellator or Mm -hmm. UFC or um, back in the day, Strike Force or probably Mm -hmm. like One FC. Now, like it's Mm -hmm. always like a two-week fight Mm -hmm. that you get on the card. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, always happens. You know, usually, yeah, you know, fights fell through. You know, like this this guy, they were looking for opponent because his opponent fell through. So yeah, you know, uh, they looked everywhere and then. They called you. They call. They called my manager. <laughs> said, no, I'll take it. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Yeah, dude. Wouldn't just fight anybody anytime, dude. Mm-hmm. That reminds me. I think like uh, I don't know how long ago it was. I think there was a time where like BJ Penn mm-hmm. fought um, Mauricio. Not no, it wasn't. Sh- it was uh, who the hell did he fight? He was a karate guy. Um, oh, Leota Machida. Mm-hmm. I think he fought Leota Machida, mm-hmm. and it was at like. 200 something pounds and this is like back when like Mm -hmm. uh bj penn was fighting at like 55 Uh it it was like this because this thing is he's Mm -hmm. like dude i'm a fighter i fight anybody Uh in any weight class but it's like man sometimes the weight the size does matter man Uh (laughs) (laughs) all that weight and strength coming behind Uh a shot dude Mm -hmm. dang so when you when you went right into mma did you stop competing in jujitsu entirely um progressively so like i I was still competing in jujitsu i still didn't a few tournaments, uh, but I'm, it starts slowing down, you know, like yeah. once a year, a couple times a year, and then totally stopped. It yeah, just completely MMA, stopped. Yeah. How long has it been since you've competed in jiu-jitsu? Oh, it's been a while. I think the last, it's been five years now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you ever think yeah. about, like, doing Worlds again or anything? Mm, I've been thinking about it, yeah. Cause yeah. I get back to, because I'm still training for MMA, you know, I'm still trying to stay active. If, like, like I said, they're, like you're talking about anything happens those short notice come you know i'm ready anytime but i'm i'm thinking about you know trying to get back to the gi train more often jujitsu you know so yeah start competing again yeah i mean my, it's, it's something to do keep right it yeah it's stay yeah i gotta get back you know stay more active and stuff so yeah i mean mi- i miss jujitsu yeah. competition and stuff dude and we're actually like living in a time to where you can actually start making some money doing oh yeah for sure like for real Mm -hmm. yeah i I mean mean, i mean i I know the top 
jiu-jitsu competitors nowadays they, they live live the dream you know live off training and competing yeah you know? i tell people like if if jiu-jitsu was in a place you know whenever i started fighting as mm -hmm. it is today i might have only mm -hmm. done jiu-jitsu yeah um yeah i might have done the same thing you know like back then when i did my transition was because i used to compete all the time it wasn't like yeah never any prizes you know yeah you're not making money <laughs> yeah you're just like competing you know you bet you get in the tournament you get a you get a, here's a medal here's a you medal, know yeah. so that's how i did my my whole jiu-jitsu career you know it's yeah jiu-jitsu still like growing and becoming more professional so yeah that's that's why i did this transition to uh, mma i was like oh there's no right now there's no money in in, in jiu-jitsu you know and i still want to keep fighting and competing so i did a transition to mma right yeah mm -hmm. dude because those checks man mm -hmm. in the ufc it's like who doesn't want that bonus check mm -hmm. you know it's like right. dude, thousand dollar bonus <laughs> right. check or mm -hmm. even just like a check that's like 10 and 10 it's mm -hmm. like man i just made twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars to right. do this thing that i love mm -hmm. to do but like who's I mean, who's making that kind of money in UFC or doing jujitsu, right. especially, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. back in 2009, 2010, right? Mm -hmm. right? Like nobody's making yep. that kind of money. But mm -hmm. like today, do like sponsorships mm -hmm. or there's more and more instructionals mm -hmm. out. It's yep. like, man, dude, you can actually mm -hmm. make some money. Yeah. Um, yeah, it became a big market. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, jujitsu has a bigger market nowadays. Yeah, it's really developing. Yeah, dude, it's, mm -hmm. it's a fast-growing sport. All right. Did you see these this last um, – what is it? What the Fuji Fuji? Uh, Fuji uh -huh. Yeah, Fuji yeah. World Pro. Is that what mm -hmm. they're calling yeah. Fuji uh -huh. World Pro? Did you watch the? Did you were you there? I j I was there for the tournament, but I wasn't there for like the main f the yeah. uh, super fight. Yeah. But dude, those I know the mm -hmm. the two headliners. I think the winners each got twenty five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, dude. That's legit for right? <laughs> for, yeah. for one night of jujitsu. Right. Just ten minutes competing, doing your thing. Yeah, dude. That's that's good. That's, yeah, that's good a good paycheck. Money. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think they also won a contract with uh, BJJ mm -hmm. Fanatics. Right. Do an instructional, mm -hmm. yeah. so dude, we're in, we're in a hell of a time for jujitsu. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you could definitely like step in there and do something <laughs> for yeah. real, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, thinking about it. Come back. Yeah. Now, have you have you noticed like like just? I mean, obviously, we talked about like the growth of the sport, but have you like noticed like the shift from um, a lot of from gi to the, like how no gi is becoming mm -hmm. like really popular right. these days like mm -hmm. what are you what are your thoughts on like the no gi scene um i i like you know i lo like i said when i started it was i did mostly gi right you know, it wasn't like as popular same thing no gi wasn't as popular back then either right. uh, nowadays i mean i like it because like if i if i was doing both at the same time back then if i was training for both would have would have helped me a lot more you know for the to do the transition i did back then from like um straight jiu-jitsu with gi to uh mma because mma is you know you gotta right. have your no gi sharp for for fighting mma so i think it's good you know be be able to compete in both be able to you know have um be able to, tra to fight with a gi without the gi you know so right i think it's a good thing that it's getting more popular it's uh, one more option for you to be competing you know so. right yeah was it a hard transition when you started doing no gi like taking those grips away yeah i mean it, yeah it takes you a, a little while just to adapt it you know like oh i'm used to that lapel grip and then <laughs> uh, that sleeve grip so you gotta you know start changing adapting right. your game you know yeah start grabbing you know wrists and elbows yep. and different mm -hmm. things i find it's easier to like go from no gi or from gi to no gi than it is from yes no gi to uh, gi. right yeah yeah it's an like easier mm -hmm. way to take away tools mm -hmm. than, or it's easier to take away tools than it is to like add mm -hmm. them i feel yeah for sure yeah that's just yeah that yeah that principle it's very important like there's people who show up at the gym oh i want to learn to fight i want to do no gi and stuff like that but man have you trained before have you done anything before no so man the first thing i recommend you is to learn the basics put your gi on you know because yeah. gi uh with no gi it's good but you know it's if, if you have no if you don't know any martial arts if you don't have no background it's like so you know, you get sweat, you get slippery. If things move so fast, you have no idea what you're doing, and things are just, you know, going fast and fast. It's hard for each process. You yeah. Know? So it's better to slow down, get the grip, hold it, you know, and start working from there. Uh, ha being able to have a few, uh, I mean, 
um, being able to slow down, you know, so you can watch and see what's going on, you know, because once you get the gear off, it's, things just gonna yeah go really fast. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. Like, just really <clears throat> slow it down, take mm -hmm. time to like process, and mm -hmm. then you can have a real understanding of the position that you're in. Right. Yeah, that reflects in your game. Like, mm -hmm. you have a very methodical, controlled mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. from, like every time we roll, it's mm -hmm. just like, like you you have your grips that you mm -hmm. that you that you attack, and uh -huh. like you, like you're very like you just just relentless pressure mm -hmm. and it's it's very like simple mm -hmm. but it, like not a lot of right. wasted energy mm -hmm. or movement you know what right. i mean like simple doesn't mean easy mm -hmm. you know what I mean? it just means it's not complicated mm -hmm. and um yeah it definitely it it, it helps to have that foundation mm -hmm. i think and like sure. put on the gi man mm -hmm. like learn the basics like learn the controls mm -hmm. like start figuring out these positions right because it, it will make it easier once you take that gi off mm -hmm. You know, gi is so fast. It's hard to hold on to people, dude. Right. And uh, like with the new systems, it's always evolving. Like Tenth Planet and mm -hmm. even like Donaher and like mm -hmm. those guys, like they've changed the mm -hmm. game whenever they oh, start, yeah. you know, developing mm -hmm. these leg attack systems and different mm -hmm. things. Do you do much legs? Um, I've been working on that on it because you know you got to catch up with everything that's happening. You know, like uh, since I've I started jujitsu, I've seen like so many things change you know like back then when i started de la Hiva was the thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> so things have you know so many changes every few years you know jiu-jitsu always evolving yeah evolving you know so yeah i'm definitely uh trying to catch up on that you know working on on the leg locks and stuff and yeah um uh even this lately i've been working helping with julius and working with him he has a fight coming up so We've been working a lot on that together also. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I had you in a few, like, leg lock positions. Mm -hmm. And, like, your defense, like, you just, you have really good defense. Mm -hmm. So, at least, like, mm -hmm. you can get the fuck out of there <laughs> right. at the very least, dude. Mm -hmm. um, like, do you, like, what's your opinion on, like, s like, how early should somebody, or is it okay or safe for somebody to start training leg locks, you think? Um. So, f um. When I started, like, you know, like, we barely used to do uh, leg locks, foot attacks, you right. know. So, like, yeah, thing, things have been, uh, have been evolving. People have been starting using it more. But, yeah, for, like, safety, you want to make sure you, you start, you at least have some level of understanding, you know. You, yeah. you have some time training before you start doing some... Uh, leg attacks you know because sometimes you know it's like that that's what back then people used to say uh, used to say like i mean if you if you like get hurt training uh, let's say you hurt your elbow because of an arm bar still you're fine you can just like wrap up your arm hold it your body f fine you're still walking and stuff now if you get your knee or foot hurt right now you're not even walking so yeah that's some serious yeah. stuff dude yeah <laughs> man i feel like you got to be in a place to where you kind of have your ego in check mm -hmm. because especially like people mm -hmm. who are like newer in the sport or just in the martial arts scene, like you have this ego where like you have to win mm -hmm. and like you get immense satisfaction, like finishing a, a tap, like finishing a submission mm -hmm. or a strangler. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you want to get that tap and, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's sometimes at the cost of your partner's safety. Right. So yeah. it's like, man, if if you can't even have your ego in check to mm -hmm. where like you can understand that, mm -hmm. hey man, this is a very mm -hmm. sensitive, dangerous position, uh -huh. then you probably shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing it. Yeah, at first at first, um that's that's why leg locks had a bad reputation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people are like just Yeah, dude. You know, ripping people's knees and ankles off. Tearing you know, like up, um what's that guy's name? He used to do it, uh, Toquinho, he, in mm. the UFC, like, shorter, stocky oh, guy. Okay. yeah. He'd, like, go for heel hooks, and, like, yeah. he wouldn't even let, <laughs> like, go people. I remember that. There's, like, there's a couple yeah. different fights. Yeah, he got in trouble for, like, mm -hmm. just holding on to things Yeah, he wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, he he wouldn't let it go, old. man. Yeah, that was, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's some scary shit, dude. Mm -hmm. Especially, it's, it's definitely one of those things to where, like, if you don't know how to even defend it, you can hurt yourself mm -hmm. defending yeah, it the wrong sure. way. Yeah. Like I, I remember I was going with a guy and I had him just in a straight ankle lock. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it wasn't, anything, but he tried to twist out of it. And it's like mm -hmm. if I didn't let go and have an understanding, mm -hmm. like I needed to like give him space to move there, mm -hmm. then he could have tore his own knee up. Right. It's like dang, mm -hmm. dude. Like <laughs> you gotta be careful. Uh -huh. it's, it's definitely scary 
to like mm-hmm. play with those legs, but we're really at a place to where like you mm-hmm. gotta understand yeah, that if you sure. wanna do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Um, I feel like the Nogi scene's gotten so big, like that's where a lot of the money is these mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing a lot of these um like these professional jujitsu mm-hmm. club, whether it's you know, Fuji World Pro mm-hmm. or Fight to Win mm-hmm. or um, no coast grappling mm-hmm. or what you name the organization there's yeah, just so yeah. many no-gi yeah there's cards. yeah there's a lot of more no gi super fights going on right now yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. do you like um do you like submission only or do you like points um <laughs> good question. i've been i mean i've only competed my whole life in point the point oh, really? system you so know you haven't done a so submission only yet i've never done a submission only what do you tournament. think about the idea of those though um i like it i mean if you have, I mean, unlimited time to, you know, try to get a submission, that's that's a good, I mean, one of, you're going to have to work, you know, and yeah. one of, you know, one of you going to get tired or the skills, you know, there's different aspects for it, for it, you know, so yeah, I like it. I mean, it's strategy wise you know your technique all of that counts you know so yeah there was a time to where i was really liking those Mm -hmm. more because it was like all right Mm -hmm. man well you don't have to be afraid to lose because maybe you gave up a position Mm -hmm. while you're trying to go for something Mm -hmm. which i I do like that um Mm -hmm. but you do you definitely see people stalling out and playing the game and trying to get to overtime yeah i mean like abu dhabi yeah there's because there's like different um let's say they have like different brackets all time so yeah then they people are still playing the rules to try to stall and get past all that time and stuff yeah but um yeah if you have like just an unlimited time amount of time and you know uh you can just play safe you know like um like when this for uh, super fights first star like with Met- metamoris you know yeah uh i remember watching um uh andre galvan and one of the gracies hero and gracie oh. you know and uh they had like that i think they went for i can't remember right now they went for like 20 minutes or something like yeah. that i mean it wasn't like n- no time but it was like all submission only and it was like 20 minutes so it was you know, I couldn't, by watching the fight, I could, like, I was, like, scoring, you know, <laughs> I was watching for the points, and it was like, oh, Andre Galvan did a lot of, a lot of points, but Hero has such a solid and good jiu-jitsu that he was, like, safe the whole time, he was moving well, he wasn't, like, worried about, oh, I mean, half guard, or he's mounting me or something, he was, like, always, always safe the whole time, so, right. it was, it was a good, I mean, on his side, he wasn't worried about those points, you know, but, right, it it shows the efficiency of like when you have like a solid and basic jujitsu, you know. Right. Like you yeah. Can, you don't you're not worried about points, but you you know how to defend yourself, stay safe, and you know keep fighting. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I like. I mean, I feel like I do I do like the the point system from just like from a competition standpoint. Mm-hmm. It's like all right, well, I did more to control and mm-hmm. and kind of be more dominant in a, in a way. Mm-hmm. But like like you said, if if you look at the totality of what jujitsu is, mm-hmm. it's like yeah, man. Like maybe if you're on bottom, all right, yeah, he mounted me, but then mm-hmm. I got out of mount, mm-hmm. and then I did this, and then, so it's like there's 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 this like this uh, this back and forth that's going on that mm-hmm. just because maybe is perceived as as like maybe not the dominant position Mm -hmm. or like you you might not be getting the points if it were a point system Mm -hmm. it's like you can still be doing jujitsu really well right yeah Mm -hmm. yeah man it's just it's it's interesting to see the evolution of Mm -hmm. of like just the whole jujitsu scene Mm -hmm. with nogi and and i think i I think we are kind of i think there was maybe a little bit of a time to where the submission only was super popular but Mm -hmm. it kind of seems to Mm-hmm. not it's kind of i don't know kind of just plateaued out and you the the point system is yeah because ended. you know like it's if you if you do a submission only in like a limited amount of time things can go on for a while yeah you know? so yeah i mean it's Points you know out. yeah and if you like if you have like people watching and you like you have public and you're streaming you can have that thing going for like four five six yeah. hours you dude, know <laughs> dude that's a long time <laughs> yeah. to roll bro. so i think that's more for like i would say like the competition the business part of it keep yeah. it you know yeah what are your thoughts on ibjjf 
like you, you, sometimes you just hear like the horror stories about them or some people just absolutely love them mm-hmm. um or you know you hear like Gordon Ryan talking shit on on IBJJF and he's oh. a, like a big fan of like ADCC mm-hmm. like what are your thoughts on them like man i i mean i've i've i have always had a good experience always with good them yeah i you know i haven't competed in a while i haven't you know it's yeah. been 5 years i haven't done an IBJJF tournament so I don't know how it's really going lately, but uh, the last last thing I heard was like that they they now gonna allow heel hooks, you know, yeah, for, for that. nogi. Yeah, you know, starting so, next year. So it's interesting that like they're catching up, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're mm-hmm. allowing reaping and mm-hmm. heel hooks. Yeah, it's because like, like we were talking about, nogi is getting so popular, and in every other tournament, it's allowing that, and yeah. you know, they probably don't, don't want to stay behind, and you know. Keep yeah. Up. Well, I feel like they have the best they have the best gi grapplers for mm-hmm. sure, but when it comes to nogi, I don't think all the best nogi grapplers are doing IBJJF. Oh yeah, for sure. I think they're also mm-hmm. doing ADCC. Yeah, this ADCC is these other super fights that are going on. Yeah, a lot Abu of Dhabi. nogi super fights. Yeah, yeah. tournaments. Dude, um, like you see what they're doing, like out of like Henzo's, like the Donaher Death mm-hmm. Squad, and like those guys, like it's just so next level mm-hmm. what they're doing oh, with yeah. the legs, mm-hmm. dude. Like at a very young age, mm-hmm. even. Right. I realized how important legs were. I guess it was probably two years ago now, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe. Yeah, I did. I went and did a. Um, I did. I was on this invite card mm-hmm. um, down in Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. and I lost to his name's William Tackett, mm-hmm. and uh, he was probably like sixteen or seventeen at the time, oh. dude. Mm-hmm. And like right now, I think he's like he's in the top ten mm-hmm. in the world no gi mm-hmm. right now. I don't know what kilo, but dude, it's just like I was watching that tournament. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, dude, like if you don't understand how to 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 like work the legs then there's no way you can make it on this world scene and just you just see these high level competitors mm-hmm. just like they're just they're just so next level mm-hmm. dude it just it blew my mind it just blew my mind yeah man i nowadays is the main thing nogi's leg attacks you know people yeah, are going for that it's it, yeah it's it's recent i mean it's not too long ago that i think it was uh Dean Lister and Dunaher were saying, "Why ignore like fifty percent of the body?" You yeah, know? Dean so, Lister, dude. He's yeah, a, he's, a, he's an old school. Like, he's been <laughs> in the game for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why it, I mean, people focus on attacking that and studying that. So I yeah. mean, it's really popular now. Damn, and bro, you don't mm-hmm. just want to just compete jujitsu now? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I may be back. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, you know, right now I still. F- Training for MMA, doing yeah. MMA, I want to fit in the schedule that jiu-jitsu training and, yeah. you know, actually train more often jiu-jitsu so I yeah. can get back to the tournaments. What's your training schedule look like? Um, so right now I'm, I've been doing conditioning a couple times a week, Muay Thai three times a week, Muay Thai, Muay Thai kickboxing and um, jiu-jitsu a couple times a week and MMA a couple times a week too. yeah are you training mm-hmm. like every day or do yeah, you have, you have rest every days day. yeah uh, just Sunday Sunday's the day off you okay know? do mm-hmm. you still stay active on Sunday like an active rest day or do you just kind of just no, listen to your body yeah just, relax, just yeah chill. totally yeah six days a week though mm-hmm. usually yeah. what multiple times a day or uh, day, yeah like there's some days a couple of days once a day you know but most of, most of it two times a day yeah, yeah yeah did you say what's your strength you're doing strength training too yes you're lifting how, uh-huh. many, how many times a week are you oh doing? that's just two times a week two times yeah. a week yeah mm-hmm. yeah in mma there's just there's so many different aspects to cover mm-hmm. i feel like it's easy to neglect mm-hmm. one of them whether it's mm-hmm. like you know you might be getting your strength conditioning in and you're wrestling your mm-hmm. mma but then you start neglecting your re- or you start neglecting um this like you're playing jujitsu, mm-hmm. or if you are doing jujitsu, mm-hmm. you start neglecting your wrestling. Right. Yeah, it's so it's so many th- things to cover when you're training for MMA. You know, that's Dude. that's why I'm saying like if I go back. Uh, yeah, I, I want to go back to train of competing jujitsu, but then I'll have to be like you know five six days a week jujitsu. Jiu-jitsu. You know, because right now it's like conditioning, it's MMA, it's kickboxing, it's wrestling. Yeah. So it's all mixed up <laughs> dude th- yeah there's just so much to cover bro mm-hmm. and then are you are you still going to be fighting at uh at 205 um right now it depends you know if i get that short notice a week um i, I i'll have to do it 205 if i get a if i get a, a time uh, a fight schedule with good, a good amount of time or two weeks i I'll, i'm dropping 285 85 yeah. what do you walk around at um 
two ten. Two ten. Ten twelve. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude. So you're still cutting what twenty five pounds? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate cutting weight. <laughs> I feel. Yeah, like me too. That's, <laughs> that's why most of my fights are at two five. Yeah, it's like the worst mm-hmm. part about the sport, mm-hmm. you know, of of fighting, where there's only five weight classes mm-hmm. or six or whatever it is now. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's such a gap in between them. Mm-hmm. It'd be nicer if there was like, if it went from like fifty five to sixty five to seventy five to eighty five mm-hmm. to like. Like every ten pounds. Right. Or so. Yeah. If if it was like a one ninety five right there, right in the middle, that would be perfect for me. You yeah, know, like that'd be a perfect. It wasn't like such a hard weight cut. You know. Yeah. That just cut twenty five, twenty pounds. Yeah. Do you ever feel like the cut like hinders your performance? Um. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. The fir- I only cut it two eighty five two times. You know, the first time was like right in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like uh, I hadn't I didn't really have an an idea of what I was doing. So I just like I just oh people wrestlers just dehydrate right the day before this and that. So I just went there and dehydrated twenty pounds <laughs> the day before <laughs> the fight. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was just like sauna jogging sauna suit. I was like. When I hit the weight, I was like almost dying, and I, I went o- over. I think I w- I went down to like 183, 182, and then I start like drinking some liquids because I was like almost passing. Out. Yeah, bro, you, <laughs> that extra two or three pounds mm-hmm. is a lot, yeah. especially when it's all water. Yeah, you must have felt like mm-hmm. death. Yeah, it was it was horrible. I had to do like some IV right right after weighing. Oh yeah, yeah was, those are back in the days you could still do IVs. Yeah, the, yeah, that was like 2000. 12 yeah 2012. yeah dude so yeah i i didn't i i drained like a ivy bag in like a few minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i've noticed when fighters like quit cutting weight mm. they seem to do better mm-hmm. than that because mm-hmm. i don't know if it's just like psychologically mm-hmm. because like i i cut 25 pounds to go to 170 mm-hmm. whenever i fought and i'm just like man i probably could have just fought at 85 mm-hmm. and probably mm-hmm. performed way better yeah, yeah. less stress mm-hmm. as far yeah. as the weight cut yeah because yeah the weight cuts is like the stress i mean it's i mean there's a lot of factors you know it's your training this a lot of things going on and you still got to do the weight yeah but i mean if it's if it's not as hard on you you know if it's if you have that break in between like like you're talking about from 85 so I go to 205 you've got 95 that you can do a healthy weight cut you know right that yeah. would be perfect yeah, yeah I mean you you get better fights right mm-hmm. like I feel like that extreme dehydration mm-hmm. is hard on the body as it is and mm-hmm. like it puts your brain kind of in a compromised position mm-hmm. you know you yeah. can't eat shots probably as well mm-hmm. as you could if you're hydrated well right. so I feel like you'd probably get mm-hmm. better fights mm-hmm. yeah more exciting yeah people mm-hmm. yeah yeah less chance of injury right but damn dude hopefully something changes with that mm-hmm. who knows who knows the f- the sport's always evolving uh-huh. yeah back then i think when i was still in california there was something about they they were creating in california i'm not sure sh- not sure if they were like creating a division for 195 in california oh, really? yeah I, I i didn't follow up on that but back then they were talking about they were like yeah do that in the state and then, then they might uh, follow, you know, like UFC, start following because there's more weight divisions. So right. I have never really followed on that, but I got really excited. I was like, oh, you're going to do a, not another division right in between? Oh, that would be awesome. It would be pretty healthy to do that weight cut. Oh, know? yeah. I think I, I think I do remember <clears throat> maybe hearing about them adding a 65 division in mm-hmm. California. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... It just it makes sense. The one thing I do like about One FC, and at least maybe on paper, mm-hmm. it seems like they do hydration tests and they're yes, like they they're, do. they're yeah. pretty big on like making sure nobody's mm-hmm. extremely dead. Yeah, I've yeah I've been I've been there uh, One FC three times, and my friend I was with my friend there was competing, and he he was like he couldn't dehydrate or anything, really? so they were testing him. There was, there was a time that he. Um, one time I think the dehydration didn't uh, test right, so he had to drink some water, make sure. Oh, really? Well, make sure yeah, he's hydrated. Make sure he's hydrated and stuff until he gets to pass the test. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, what's that organization like? Kind of like they're they're pretty strict with everything. Like they're 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 keeping tabs on fighters and. Uh, I don't know if I asked that question very. <laughs> 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 like like, so at, at one FC like. Mm-hmm. Do 
I mean, just how is the staff with with everybody? Like, are they are they taking care of the fighters really yeah, well? Like, yeah, they're super yeah. it's super really, accommodating yeah. mm-hmm. for sure. Because I, I know, like on the UFC, dude, like it's like kind of like roll out the red carpet for mm-hmm. you. Like, mm-hmm. are the fighters pretty happy in one FC? From yeah, what you could yeah, tell, yeah. I mean, they treat the fighters pretty well. I mean, even the the weight cut, like it's not like oh, if at this time if you don't hit the weight, you're you're done. You know, like because yeah. uh, it's like the hydration process and make sure you're hydrated and everything. So yeah. You have they give you allow you some time to you know be really? able to work on your weight and stuff like that. That's what's up. They seem yeah. like a really good organization mm-hmm. in, in the sense of like you know paying the fighters well and like mm-hmm. putting on like a good show. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it's, it would be interesting to see if they can if they can really make some changes to the weight cutting thing though mm-hmm. for sure. You know what I'm oh saying? yeah, yeah. Dang, dude. Um, well, shit, man. We've uh we've been talking for mm-hmm. almost an hour, dude. <laughs> <laughs> See, you didn't think we'd be able to right. do it. You didn't think we'd be able to do it, man. Um, yeah, it's flowing. I know, man. What What do you think? Like, what's What's next for you, man? Like, I know you're just staying active and staying ready, man. Yeah. But like, yeah. So right now, I'm, I'm I've been trying to get a fight in MMA. You know, so it's been a little while, man. It's been over a year since my last fight. Yeah. So it's been hard. In you know, it's um. I'm after COVID. I moved. I stayed three months in Brazil, and then I moved back here, and then start training again, getting good shape. I was like, oh, I'm gonna fight now. Yeah, things gonna go back to normal, and then you know, just couldn't can't get the fight. You know, just like I tried to fight around here, states around here, just like three, four dudes. No, I don't wanna fight him. Dude. I don't wanna fight him. So you're in that so limbo just, place again, yeah. dude. Yeah, man. So it's tough because it's <clears> like <throat> it's like it's the the people who are kind of like like kind of up and coming mm-hmm. like they probably don't want to fight you because mm-hmm. th- like they don't want to lose yeah like, yeah i understand that but you know i've i've tried to fight guys who like who were in the ufc before too right. so it's like fight f- veterans you know like oh i'm a veteran too let's let you know let's yeah. fight so uh, you know, they I don't want to do that either right, because it's know. like you're too good for them mm-hmm. because it's like well where's it's like all risk for them mm-hmm. and it's just like well, why do I w-? people play this weird politic mm-hmm. game when they come mm-hmm. to, to taking fights <laughs> right. I don't understand it's like do you want to fight or mm-hmm. not yeah yeah, dude you're in a weird mm-hmm. spot bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's what I'm saying man if it, if it keeps taking too long gotta s- go back training jiu jitsu get back to i want to stay active so go back to competing jiu jitsu you know? yeah bro get you on like a fuji world pro mm-hmm. or something like 2500 bucks to mm-hmm. go do some yeah. jiu jitsu man yeah, sure but um so you're looking you're looking everywhere for fights mm-hmm. like so you're yeah. willing to fight local or yeah local? everywhere yeah i've been uh, looking local you know around here states around national level you know? yeah Dang man, I just I, it's got to be hard though. I, I can't imagine there are as many shows putting mm-hmm. on fights right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I actually thought that you know, um, I'll have a chance because actually it's still there's still a lot of shows going on, you know. But there yeah. isn't as many fights coming from the outside of the country, you know. So because mm. of traveling and stuff, so I I thought, oh, maybe there's a better chance of getting something right now because you know there's not as many fights coming from abroad. So right. Uh, but still, man, it's just still tough. Tough. Dang, bro. <clears throat> have you thought about just to stay active, like to do just like a stand-up fight, like take a mm. boxing match or a kickboxing yes, match? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean. Thinking about that, I saw there's like an IKF tournament coming coming up by uh, by the end of October around here. But then uh, I looked as like more for like beginners, you Amateurs, know. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like oh damn, I, ca- I can't I can't That's compete. That's funny. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody uh-huh. yesterday who's doing that tournament. Mm-hmm. I think it's like on the 31st, mm-hmm. it's like out in O'Fallon. Uh-huh. Yeah, dude. But yeah, I think it's all like yeah. amateurs. <laughs> yeah, it's like kickboxing, Muay Thai boxing. I was like, oh, maybe I'll do some striking right now. I was just like, oh no, I can can't really join that. It's more for like Maybe beginners yeah, and stuff we like that. Yeah, go beat up some some beginners. Be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, there's fighters who do that back then when I was training in early 2010s. Um, I, w- I was trying to get my striking experience. I was already um, a pro MMA fighter, so I couldn't do like any amateur striking competition. So I'll do smokers, like it's like in fights in the gym. You right. Know? Yeah. So. 
like I felt like a professional kickboxer at the time who was doing that same kind of thing to stay active, you know. Yeah. So like the guy nowadays, he's like a top guy in Bellator, and we like back then fought in the gym. Really? You know? Dang. Yeah. yeah, dude. Those smokers, like the, that's a big thing, and I, I know in boxing, mm-hmm. I guess maybe for kickboxing too, just in the striking community, mm-hmm. like they hold legit fights just mm-hmm. in the gym. Right. Yeah, you get a mm-hmm. lot of experience doing mm-hmm. that, dude. Mm-hmm. Dang. You remember the guy's name? Um, Matt Baker. Matt I mean, Baker. Ma- Matt Baker. Uh. You know, I asked like I was going to know it. But <laughs> I don't even. I'm so bad with names. I'm much better with faces. Mm-hmm. But, dude, that's legit. Yeah, man. I remember I took um, I took a, a, bo- a pro boxing match mm-hmm. and a pro kickboxing match. Mm-hmm. Like, during like some downtime during when I was fighting MMA just because mm-hmm. it's like dude, you just want to stay active right. and just you know maybe get some get some extra money and mm-hmm. just like just kind of a win 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 like yeah. even even if worst case scenario like you lost that fight mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter for your MMA yeah, yeah. It's still, record yeah it's to experience man you yeah stay active yeah mm-hmm. yeah dude dope well man I hope something <coughs> fucking comes to fruition for you pretty yeah. soon man like yeah. it'd be it'd be dope to see you back in there or for at sure. the very <laughs> least dude get you back mm-hmm. on the jujitsu yeah. mat. I mean, I, I was I was ready to go anytime, you know, like I just got, I got sick a few weeks ago. So yeah. all the training, all the conditioning I had built up, you know, the past, since I got back from Brazil, yeah, uh, kind of had to stay home for a little bit, lost yeah. conditioning, but building back up now, back to the gym, it's been a few weeks now. So yeah, be ready to go anytime just now. slowly building it back yeah. up. That's what's up, man. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, I'm excited to see what you got on mm-hmm. the horizon. Dude, Marcel, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really yeah. appreciate it. Welcome. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, is there anything um, that you wanted to, uh, like, plug or anything like that? Uh, sponsors mm-hmm. or t- t- tell um, tell the listeners maybe where uh, they could follow you? Yeah, if they for sure. To. I mean, you can follow me on my social, me- social media, Marcel Fortuna. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, also, right now, I have a sponsor, as partner, uh, HKA, uh, okay. HKA Gear. So I've been, you know, been using their gear right now. It's a uh, guy from around here, local company. So Makes pretty good gear. Yeah, so I've been working with them, using their equipment very good. So, yeah. Dope. Dope, <clears throat> dope. And I'll put that in the show notes, too, mm-hmm. make it easier for people right. to check it out. So, awesome. dude, Marcel, thanks yeah. again, brother. Thank you, bro. All right, everybody, until next time.